and good evening um all my fans <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you right so i'm aisha i am a front-end engineer at uh, wiki so today i'll be talking about something that um is quite unfamiliar to me as well um it's uh, i'll be breaking down svg animations with you but this is not really about svg this is more about animation and I don't really care about the technical stuff. I just want to get into the fun stuff of animation, actually. So uh, without further ado, um, when I first started working uh, with animations, actually, it was, uh, it, it was a slightly scary thing. And uh, it's because of three reasons. Because I don't really have the fundamental when it comes to uh, SVG animations or any types of animations, actually. The only fundamentals that I have that I could actually use for this personal project of mine was uh, user interface animation, which is not really that different when you translate it into something much more complex, which we will talk about later. And the second is, it's very difficult for me to visualize animation. See, I don't really have the best imagination. I, I don't have art background. I don't really draw. And the only reason I can draw is because of Illustrator. I can cheat a lot with Illustrator, actually, because I can correct the lines. I can correct colors very easily. But don't tell me to draw on canvas. I cannot do that. And thirdly, it's, it's unfamiliar territory. And I've never, I don't really work with SVG on, my, on a daily basis. So it's mostly just JavaScript, CSS. And SVG is, uh, when I first read about it, it's a different, different ballpark. It's not that difficult, but there's some concepts that you need to be able to grasp before you would be able to use it effectively. And so this is a story of zero to hero, okay? Where I start with no animation experience at all into making something that I'm quite proud of. So this is something that I created recently. It is actually... Um, <coughs> Uh, visualization itinerary of my recent trip to New Zealand and um, as you can see it's actually a uh, itinerary of it, it's basically a travel blog on steroids where I basically tell you where I went and basically represent the area that I went with icons and I put a little bit of blurbs of my experience there it's actually incomplete <laughs> it's incomplete because Jing right there actually forced me to speak about it today so I had to actually just deploy whatever I have because I had plans to actually put pictures and pictures of me and like in order to represent the place even better she first enhanced later yes <laughs> that's what Hui Jing taught me today and so I'm going to be walking um, all of you to the process that I had to go through in order to work on this. Like I said, it's zero to hero. Anybody can do this. If I can do this, y'all can do it too. So, um, first. First things first. So, if any of you are interested in looking at the code uh, or more of the animations provided here, you can go to this site. I, I, I put all of the animations there so you can check out the code easily. I will not be presenting code today. You know, <laughs> it's not my speciality. So, okay, so the first thing, when you, when you start with something that is really new, right, one of the things that scares you the most is, you know, you don't, you don't really know where to start. So the only advice that I have for you is look at the fundamentals of animation. And like I mentioned before, my specialty was, uh, you know, I'm a UI engineer, basically. So I have animate UI stuff. And... Uh, as you can see, there's uh, some basic animation properties that you can look into, like rotate, scale, opacity, and translate. And this is something that usually CSS engineers will be familiar with, right? On a daily basis, you work with this. So animation for UI is actually pretty simple. And it's something that we're familiar with. So for example, oh, the image's not loading. Let's see. We want it. OK. So you'll have something like this which you you only need to animate one property which is the scale property in order to make sure that you know it it works nicely it animates nicely and also for certain animations 
there will be cases where you need to combine animations, right? In this case, you need to combine animations where uh, that is not just scale. You'll combine, say, for example, with and a, bit, a little bit of translate when you hover. So this is UI animation, basically, and it's what I deal with on a daily basis. What about cartoons and characters, though? Is it the same? Well, yeah, you can say so. For example, if you have something like this, which is just a simple animation of a sheep rotating its head side to side. It's very simple. You can think of it as just rotate left and right, right? So it's just one animation property. And there's also other complex animation which you can combine those animation properties, just like the UI animation method that I talked about re before. You can actually combine them to create interesting effects like, for example, smoke effects like this. I don't know if you can see it, but there's supposed to be a smoke, like a chimney smoke there. And uh, this is, uh, who's a Lord of the Rings fans here? Any Lord of the Rings fans? Come on! Come on! <laughs> okay, right, okay. This is the Shire, okay? Uh, in New Zealand, you get to see the Shire. Sorry? I'm a very big Lord of the Rings fan. So <laughs> okay, so well, you can see actually in New Zealand, you can see this in Matamata, Mata, a place in New Zealand. So, but anyway, um, so how did I understand how to manage, uh, how to actually, how do I understand the connection from the U, from UI animation into something as complex as this, right? Well, this is where the oldest trick in learning comes into use which is we learn by doing, and then we watch and learn, <laughs> and then we observe. And so my inspiration comes from a blog by David Walsh. David Walsh actually, I don't know whether it's David Walsh, but it's just, it, it is in his blog. So, so I saw this, um, oh, that's interesting. The animation didn't work properly here. Okay. <laughs> But this is not mine, by the way. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so you have that. So I got the. It was supposed to look like an explosion, and it is a combination of uh, opacity and scale. And when I look at the code, I was like, oh, it's interesting. This is actually something that I'm quite familiar with. You know, some some smoky things. I could do that. So I decided to just adapt this. And I did a little bit something different. To make it look like a chimney smoke, uh, I'll combine, just like David Walsh, it was scale and opacity, but I combined a little, another animation property, which is translate, that could actually uh, make sure that the smoke gives like it's going up kind of effect. Yeah, so that's basically how I achieve that smoky look. All right, now, however, I mean, we don't live in a utopia. Not everything is easy for us to animate, unfortunately, right? So, like I said, like my second problem was I don't really know how to visualize. Like, I don't really have the best imagination in the world, you know? If I do, I'll probably be a game designer by now. Weijing would know. <laughs> All right, so, but how do you actually visualize, right? When it comes to animating something much more complex, I'm not talking about smokes, but I'm talking about animating limbs, for example, and I'm talking about animals, you know, animating animals walking or animals eating. How do we do that? So this is where prototyping animation could come in handy. But how do we prototype animation? You know how to protect your, like prototype your design by basically using Sketch or Photoshop, but is there a good way to prototype animation? Well, it's a bit of a hack. So this is an example that I have when I try to visualize the animation that I want to do. What I want to do here is I want to animate the sheep eating a grass. So what I do is basically I just select the head, right? Select the head and I want to imagine that, okay, I want, I want this sheep to be eating something. So what I do is I, I move it down a little bit and then I rotate. So when I rotate, I notice that, oh, that looks like the sheep is no nodding, not really eating something. So let's just, you know, rotate it a little bit more down so that it actually looks real like it's eating and then we just translate it again further down to make it look believable so 
why is this important, right? It's important because so that when you first look at your animation, the way you approach it, you don't really approach it in terms of thinking about the code, right? You think about it in terms of visualizing it first. You want to visualize how am I going to do this? So once you have a clear visualiz visualization, you can actually translate that visualization into code. In this case, it's very easy for me now. I know what I'm I want. I know that I'm going to translate it down by a few pixels, and then I rotate it a little bit by a few pixels, and then I'll just repeat. So basically, in terms of animating limbs, it is best to separate the things that you want to animate in Illustrator. And this is what we've achieved, see, where the sheep is actually eating something. And I put it on do, so. I don't really have to bother. Sometimes people don't notice that anim I animate things, so I just want it to be on loop. And just like I mentioned before, if you want to look at code, it's actually a little code, like here. It's not, it's not even that much, see? So it shouldn't be that intimidating. So, all right, so thirdly, it's unfamiliar territory. But here's the best part about unfamiliar ter territory, right? You can go crazy and combine those fundamentals. I remember talking to one of my mentors before about the beginner's mindset, especially people who are not familiar, who are in unfamiliar ter territory. The best thing about beginner's mindset is that you don't really think about the impossibility. You don't really think about, oh, this is hard because you don't really know what could go wrong. You don't, you don't really have knowledge about, oh, is this the right thing to do? Is this the right way to do it? Or you don't really have that mindset of, ah, this is, this is not the right way to go. As a beginner, you, every way is va valid way, basically. And so I have a question today. Who can guess what animation property that I use? Okay, you have translate, rotate, scale, and opacity. I'm not talking about the smoke. I'm talking more about this guys that are here. Whoever can answer will get chocolates. <coughs> Anyone, please take a stab. I'm guessing it's scale. Alright, translate. Okay. How do I make it vibrate? Right, that's correct. Give the man the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I I'm not going to do it. I'm giving the talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> so that's correct. It is um it is translate. So what I did was I just translated up and down by 2 pixel, 2 pixel negative 2, and then I just speed it up by 0.5 and you get that vibration animation. Is it the right way to do it? I don't know, maybe not, but who cares? <laughs> okay, so my conclusion is that animation is not that scary, all right? If I can do it, anyone can do it. And I hope that my talk today, this not so technical talk of mine, will give any one of you the courage and the motivation to try out things that you would not have tried out before. All right, whether it be it animation or not. And so that's all I have for you. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Do Don't be shy. Chocolate, you? <laughs> <laughs> for those animations, yes? how do you load the images? Do you preload images here? Whenever we enter the page, it's, it's loaded. All right, that's a good question. So this morning, <laughs> so basically, I actually uh, load it with Ajax. So basically, I load all of those symbols with Ajax and then I prepend it on my HTML. All right, this is initially how I want to do it. So it's, uh, it's faster and I can cache those files. The, the problem with inline SVGs is it's difficult to cache, right? Uh, but with, with Ajax, you, you, if, you, if you load your SVG with Ajax and then prepend it, then you can cache those files. So that's what I plan to do. Th that was initially my plan. But this morning, I had to deploy to CodePen to do this demo. And so I, uh, for this one, yes, you're right. I inline it. There's no preloading. Yeah. It's just inline, inlining SVG. So is there any way to preload images other than the Ajax? Uh, other than Ajax, there's a way to preload. I think there is. 
I think there is, but I'm not so sure. That's but what there is. Um, you show the sheep, right? Yeah. So we need to load two more, many, so many images, right? Uh, Can not this really. Head is one image, one image oh. and body is one image. No, it's actually, uh, it's not image. SVG is actually paths. Yeah, path yeah path. so it's not really loading those images, uh, but it's loading those paths. And it, uh, there are... Well, one thing I want to correct is the SVG sure. has to be open. <laughs> so there are ways to actually optimize your SVG. So basically, I, I didn't talk much about the technical part today, but probably I should have. But there are ways to uh, optimize your SVG in terms of optimizing the path in order to make sure that your code is small. All right, that's one way. So, of course, with SVG, you're going to get one large file if you do not know how to optimize correctly. But if you... Uh, can, I, can I enter a site that I could show? <laughs> one of the sites that I go to to optimize my SVG is called SVGO. Yeah, SVGO actually helps you to optimize your SVG file to make it as small as possible. What it does is it's stripped out all of those unnecessary things on your, uh, on your SVG file. Basically, for example, ID, I think they could actually shorten the ID names, for example, to make sure that the file size is small. And one, one way is that, uh, yeah, you can see the features here, which you can choose how to, you can either prettify your code to make sure you minify it with a smaller file size. Yeah, so this is, SVG optimization in itself is a, a topic on its own. Yeah. So if you're interested to know more about SVG optimization, I suggest you check out uh, articles from Sarah Sui Dan. She's, uh, I think of her as the SVG queen. She's really good at this. <laughs> right. Actually, I have done some SVG animation before, but that one directly exports SVG from the Adobe Flash. Okay. Um, but more in some browsers, the colors, some, some transparent colors and are not supported well. Whenever we converted into SVG animations, right? right, right. The colors and the layers are not supported. I mean, that depends. Yeah, check your paths. And also, I noticed that when you have shadows, it didn't work well. If you have shadows, gradients work well, but not shadows. Are you using illustrators to your yeah. Illustrator? Yeah. Don't use Flash to generate SVG. Um, you should be working in Illustrator if you've got the Adobe Sketch. Oh yeah, Sketch is a really good tool as well. Yeah. yeah. But um, SVGs are a minefield if you're not careful. So if you're using the wrong thing to export, you get nasty. So if you're seeing something wrong like you are, then just try another editor. And uh, the fonts in SVG also, if, if it's a font in the SVG, right, some text means, then that one also looks weird. Don't so use SVG no, if you use yeah, if you if you use a font in the in your SVG that is not a system font, you run the risk that it will not render correctly because then it depends on the font being installed on your user's computer. So like what Chris said, you would convert it to path, but if you convert it to path, your file size will become much bigger. So you need to keep that into consideration. And the alternative is to serve your font as a web font, and mm. you confirm you'll be able to get it. Mm -hmm. and you will get the savings from SVG as well. So there's a bit more work in that. Yeah, but at the, the end... Fonts are, for example, if we loaded the fonts, web fonts, right? Yeah. The fonts loaded correctly. But the size, right? Whenever in the SVG, the text is inside the rectangle means, when in the browser after rendering, the text might be larger than the rectangle. You might want to check your um, the SVG file itself because at the end of the day SVG you can debug your SVG in the browser especially right. if you use like Chrome Firefox is also pretty good now you yeah. use and they will actually prettify it for you um, even if it's compressed and then you can actually hover to see exactly what what goes what is happening and uh, the properties that are applied to that particular element of the SVG that you are highlighting to see exactly what went wrong because it doesn't really translate directly the if, especially if it's font size if it's inside the SVG and when it's rendered in the browser I don't think it's the same it should be the same um, but it, it, I don't think it for, it's, it's like 16 points in your SVG may not be 16 points in the browser. You will probably need to double check that. That's a, it's always a bit tricky to use SVG fonts in your SVG. Yeah. Yeah. If you 
Lady Somebody behind. Have a question. Yeah. Show something at her. Like, I'm also new to the FAP, and right. I've tried using it, for example, like putting a logo as an S F A D into my website. Right. Um, and as you said, in my SVP it's just really messy. Right. So I end up just putting it in an image. Right. Um, so I wonder what's the difference between like an inline SVP and an image like encompassing it. So one of the difference that I found is <coughs> It is very, e it's easier for me to style an inline SVG. But when I embed it in some other way, it might be hard for me to control it even with CSS, you see? So this is why ultimately inlining is preferable. But like you said, yes, inlining could be very messy. But he, we have a method where we can actually use, you, have you heard uh, using SVG as sprites before? No, okay, so basically, okay, so when you go to the, um, can you show the project again, please? While you're getting to that, just the point on using um, SVG as an image source, mm -hmm. uh, there are some browser problems with, uh, I think, IE versions, uh, Edge, sometimes, I can't remember exactly. Um, I've taken to avoiding using them as an image source because it just gets messy. Um, All right. Depends what you want to do with the SVG, but the best thing with SVG is you can scale it. And when you're using it as an image source, it, it just gets messy. If you get it working in Chrome or Firefox, it's great. When you cross to another browser, it all falls to bits. So it, it's nice to just do like that. Right. And another thing that I want to say is, in terms of controlling the messiness, is to actually reuse your icons, right? So basically, these and these and these are all actually icon reuse. It's not like a new SVG file or anything. It's actually reuse. We use, uh, you can search for SVG symbol to, to learn how to reuse your SVG. And this is good, this is also another optimization uh, solution that you can look into actually, by using symbols instead of actually putting paths one by one because that could get messy and it'll make your file size bigger. So using symbols is one of the ways to make it less messy. Yeah. A couple of really good articles and CSS tricks on that, mm -hmm. on sprinting and using views and different things like that. Right. Thank you. No problem. I also want to shout out a book uh, on SVG animations that's really good. Um, it's by Sarah Dresner. It just got released very, very recently. Um, that's a <laughs> Yeah. She's a lovely human being, really. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a really, really good book. Um, yeah, it's yeah. an animation. Yeah. It's a very comprehensive book. If you're really interested in SVG animations and you really want to get into it, it's very accessible, meaning it doesn't assume that you know a lot of things already, but at the end of the book, you'll be pretty great. Book. Read books, kids. It's good <laughs> for you. <laughs> Yes, oh, Kion. Kion. Ask a question, quick. <laughs> the question could be. Uh, Don't ask hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. New Zealand map. Where you get the New Zealand map? Oh, it's from this site. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I'll share it with you. <laughs> it's a uh, it, it's a site with open source uh, SVG maps of all of the world. So yeah, I can give it to you. Yeah. It will be in the show notes after the yeah. fact. When, yeah, <laughs> when the videos are published and stuff. Follow us on social media. Yes. Yeah. Did you have to optimize them? Have you optimized this much? Or have you not yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the only thing I did optimize was my SVG. Yeah, I, I went to the New Zealand map, like any given map you can get with more detail in those things. Oh yeah, yeah. So for 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 the New Zealand map, I actually downloaded the least file size. All right, that's the first thing I did, and the second thing I did is when I was uh, illustrating with uh, Sketch and no Illustrator mainly because Illustrator is easier to actually optimize. It's better optimization. So I make sure that uh, I, I follow a few articles that actually teach me how to optimize my SVG even further. So I actually optimize the symbols and all, which yeah. One of the reasons uh, Illustrator is so good is because um, some of the pioneers of the early SVGs and browsers worked for Adobe and wrote the implementations in 
Yeah, they wrote the right. engine for for, yeah. for for Illustrator. Oh, okay. So I now know people who are in the credits for Illustrator. Oh, okay. okay. They, yeah, they just they turned on, I'm sorry. Adobe not doing the right thing, got hired mm. and wrote the export. Oh, all right. That's, that's, it's that's trivia. good to know. I didn't know that. Trivia, <laughs> trivia. Unfortunately, nothing else is as good as Illustrator. Right. Yeah, that's true. Because, yeah, it's sad. Yeah. You, you can get around it with I'll other things. by hand or something. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Right. More questions? questions. It's okay because everybody had a lot of questions, right? Thank Maybe you so somebody much. else needs to give me an SVG talk. Okay. If you are my friend, <laughs> you will be eventually forced to talk. Um, it's a miracle that I still have friends, but that's not the point. The point is even one day you all will be sitting here and talking also because Chris and I are running out of things to talk about. Yes. Yeah. They we're welcome first time right. you, so yeah, but anyway, we've got a lot of stickers. Um, if you are interested in stickers, and you can come and like look at my mascot, but you cannot have him because he's mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, thank, thank you so much. For thank you so much for being wonderful yeah. audience.